In this video today, we're going to have a look at how to put hops onto a map. So I've got a couple of maps here that I'm going to be working with. One that I'm going to take the bits and pieces from, and then one that I'm going to actually put it into. So I need to start with the one that I'm going to take all the information from first of all. So I'm going to open this up and <clears throat> I feel it's important to identify what script the map that you're taking everything from uh, first of all, you identify that first so that you can work with it depending on the script will depend on how you implement it into your the map that you're going to be playing with uh, or putting the hops or whatever uh, additional fruit type you're going to be bringing over. So if we go into the mod desk here on this particular map we come down we can see that this is using the additional map type script this is actually an older version uh, on this particular map uh, but that's fine because i'm just going to adjust things to make it work with the later version <clears throat> so in this particular one we've got um, the additional map type script here and we can open this up and have a look and it's actually version 1.0.0.5 could always work with that script if you're comfortable with that go with it but i'm going to actually go into a different one which is actually um <clears throat> version 1.0.0.8 uh, i don't know i believe there is actually a newer version uh 1.0.0.9 but this is one i've got and it works perfectly fine so i'm going to go with it i don't know what the changes are between this and version uh, 0.9 or whatever you want to call it the later version but this is the one i'm going to work with anyway so <clears throat> I'm going to need to take some parts obviously from this map so I need to identify where all those parts are and this is a map for 17 anyway so I won't need to change or convert any of the formats for the DDS files and all the rest of it so it should be pretty straightforward so for me the easiest way to find everything is to actually open up the maps01.i3d this may be called something different for whatever map you're going to be working with um, but uh, in this case it's map01.i3d so I'm going to right click that and open it with notepad++ then in here I'm going to look for hops <clears throat> well we can see straight away just by scanning through this top section here I've already got my first one which is just here so I can <clears throat> go ahead and copy that text so I'll bring up my search window just so I've got it up there with the hops in it already and I need to take this line uh, of information and I'm going to make a copy of that for me the easiest way is to create a new text document here in notepad plus plus and then just paste everything i find over into this new one so we're going to go to the next line i don't need that we need our distance to fuse channels so we're going to take all of the appropriate ones here for the hops so we'll copy all of those lines bring them over and put them into my new text document create a couple of lines because we're going to be moving into the material section next so we've got our foliage channel uh, for the actual material here so we're going to copy all of those parts over like so and we'll continue our search so the next one is our foliage sub layer here so i'm going to make a copy of that line and then paste that in so i'll make a couple more lines paste that in like so okay excellent we've got all the parts we need there so the next thing we need to look for is our foliage growth shader so <clears throat> if we go back over into this particular i3d here i'm going to just type in there oops growth and we'll click find next and this brings us to our fruit growth foliage shader.xml which has a file ID of 49 so that's fine that's what matches this custom shader ID here I we'll just change the language so it brings it out a little bit there we go which is 49 so when you get to the map that you're going to be in bringing this into you need to do a search for this fruit growth foliage shader and identify what the file ID is and make sure that this custom shader matches that so we'll do that when we get to it so I don't need this map 01 anymore the i3d here because I'll get everything I need from there uh, the only other thing I will actually look at very quickly is I'm going to search down to my material section um, and come down to <coughs> the foliage sub layer here and I'm going to have a look at the hops and just come across to the block shape ID and I want to see if that matches anything that's already on the map 
as in standard fruit types like your wheat, barley and so on. If we look at this, we've got 22 to 27. We can also see 22 to 27 up here. So if I actually look at that line and see what that line is, we can see that's referring to maize. So it looks like the hops shares the maize block shape ID. Again, when we come to bring this into the map we're going to be working with today, we need to make sure that our hops matches the maize block shape ID on that particular map because it may be different. Okay, so I don't need this open anymore. I've got everything I need from there. So now it's just a case of finding all of our files and then bringing them over into the appropriate folders. So the first one we've got is our foliage and then our hops diffuse. So I'll bring up the other map here as well. And again, because this is a 17 map that I'm taking it from, everything should be structured very similar. So we go into our foliage folder here and we need to look for our hops. We can just do a search for this. I've already done it many times. There we go. So we've got that one. So I'll make a copy of that, come over to our foliage folder and paste that in like so. <clears throat> Just making sure that that's actually the right one. We've got hops diffuse and this is hops diffuse because it could may maybe called foliage underscore hops or whatever else. Just make sure the actual name of it does match what you've got in your information you've copied over from the other map which it does so that's fine so we'll then come down to our next one and we've got our textures terrain distance so we need to go into that particular folder on this on this map that we're taking all the stuff from so we're going to go into maps textures terrain distance and again we're going to look for hops so i'll do our search and we have our information there so we'll make a copy of that Come over into our other folder here, maps, textures, terrain, distance, and we'll paste those in like so. Perfect. Okay, so the next thing then is to make a few changes to the information that we've got here so that it doesn't interfere or cause a conflict with the map zero one that we're going to be adding it into because these numbers more than likely already exist within that map zero one dot three D. And you can't have duplicates of the same number because it will cause a conflict. So the easiest way for me is to just add 100 to the beginning of every single number that is relevant. So we have our file IDs. So we'll just add 100 to the beginning of all of those. Like so. Then we have our material ID, which will also add 100. The custom shader ID, we will, we will need to check on the map that we're going to bring it into. So we'll leave that alone for now. Put a 100 onto there. Because I've increased my foliage channels, my density channels, I need to increase this one up to 5. <clears throat> you need to refer to the actual video that I made on adding in additional map type script stuff and whatever else. And if you download, I'll put a link in the description. There is a PDF file that comes with the version I have and it will explain all about density channels and all the rest of it and how to set those up if you've got chop straw mod and all the rest of it. So I'm not going to get too much into that in this video, but... For my map that I'm going to be working with, or the map that I'm going to be working with, I've increased my density channels, so I need to have these at 5 and 5. So I'm going to add 100 to the beginning of this, so it matches this number up here. Then if I come across to my distance channels, I need to do the same again here and add 100 to the beginning of all of these. Like so. <clears throat> And we will check our block shape ID when we bring it into the map zero one that we're going to be working with. So that's what we're going to do now. So need to come into this particular map folder here or maps folder. I'm going to open up the map zero one dot i three d and we'll just copy this stuff over one section at a time. So start with our file IDs. So we're going to copy all of those, bring them in at the top here. Keep it somewhat simple, like so. <clears throat> and then we'll come down to our material section, so we'll add those in. And I'll just do a search for the material section so that I can put it at the bottom of that particular setup there. So we'll paste that in, close that. And then we'll scroll down to our foliage sublayer here and add in our line of text there which is 
this one here. So we'll make a copy of that, create our new line and paste it in. And then we can just tidy up the text to make it all line up and everything. Okay, so we've actually got um, the density map type index in this particular case, we've been lucky and it does follow on numerically. So 14 and 15, that's fine. As I said before, my density map channels are slightly higher. So I need to match those with five and five. We'll just check our maze block shape ID matches this one. Don't see why it wouldn't. And it does, that's perfectly fine. No problems there. We come back up to our material channel here and we'll have a look at our custom shader ID, which is 49. So if we come back to the top of the page, bring up our search window and we'll go growth again, like we did before. And we'll check our fruit growth photo shader. In this particular case, it's also 49. So no changes required there either. So we're in the editor now and I'm just going to test that it actually works. Before you get into um, your tip on ground stuff, park animations, field planes, all the rest of it, come into the actual giant editor once you've added all the appropriate parts into the i3D and you've brought over all your foliage textures and whatever else, set up your custom shader IDs, block shape IDs, and all the rest of it, come into giant editor, come into your foliage paint, lower layer paint mode, choose your hops or whatever additional fruit type you're bringing in. And then we're just going to test it out. So I'm going to click on our, <clears throat> if it actually lets me, no, it won't. Anyway, texture layer painting brush there. And we're going to choose channel seven and we're just going to paint it onto the map. And we'll just check it out, make sure it looks okay. It doesn't look weird or anything like that. If it looked weird, then it might be a block shape ID, which is out of place. But that looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to go with that. So I'll just erase that because I don't want that in this particular field. Not that it would really matter because this is actually a non-owned field so it would just be replaced with whatever texture the ai decides to put on here anyway but that's fine and then we just click save and update the i3d and whatever else so i'll just do that and then we'll come back once we get to the next part so this particular map that i'm working with already has the additional map type script on it and everything else i've set it up for a few different things but now that I've brought in the hops, I need to obviously make a few changes to the mod desk. So what I'm going to do is actually bring up the mod desk. I will actually delete that because I no longer require that. I'll bring up the mod desk for both the maps here. <clears throat> and we'll do a side by side thing here. So what I'm going to do here is this is the map that I need to take all the uh, bits and pieces from. This one on the right hand side. And I need to bring it over to the left. So over in this particular one, as I say, I've already got the script and everything set up, so I don't need any of this stuff here. I just need to bring over the text for hops. So we'll try and find that. There we go. So we're going to take the text there, copy that over, and I'll just bring it in on the end here. That's fine. I'm going to adjust it slightly so it matches what I've already got on this particular map. And now I've got it set up. like so and then I need to make some adjustments here now because this <clears throat> the map that I'm taking it from uses an older script the layout of the actual bits and pieces in here may be slightly different so I don't want to copy it directly from there what I'm actually going to do is make a copy of the line I've already got for cotton and I'm going to make a new line to keep all of my fruit types up at the top and my fill types below and then I'll just take the actual fruit type name or fill type name, whatever, and overwrite that like so. Okay, excellent. So there's nothing else I need to bring over from that mod desk because there's nothing else there that's relevant. And I'm just going to have a quick look through these. I won't get too much involved with these bits and pieces here. I just want to make a couple of changes and whatever else. So if we come across here, we've got show on table, show on map. Not too worried about all the other stuff there. That's fine reset spray so on and so on it's not an earth fruit we will change this to hops not that it matters because it's not relevant because it's a uh, not an earth fruit but i like to have the names correct in there if possible it doesn't have a winrow on this particular fruit type so that's fine we'll say false 
Um, come across no straw. We don't want any straw, so that's fine. So we've got has fill type, has materials, has particles, use heap. Yes, please. So we're going to go along to there. All of these are fine combine. Uh, forage harvester, forage wagon, and so on and so on. That's fine. We'll keep that same. Fruit types is fine. Sewing machines. I'm going to change this one here. And I don't want to use the grain header for this particular one. I want to use whoops, the maize header for like, the same as co uh, when you um, cut corn. So I want to use the maize header, not the grain header in this particular case. So I'm just going to change that over there like so. Perfect. But everything else I'm going to leave the same there. That's fine. We'll just continue across here. Uh, it's not a pig food. We're not going to use it as a sheep grass. Grain, protein, earth fruit, no. Fill type conversion, chaff, we'll leave that the same. Etc, uh, etc. Et it doesn't have a bale, so that's fine. And again, we're going to change this to hops. Uh, square bale, square, no, that's fine. So everything else there is set up as we need it to be. Excellent. So I can go ahead and save that. And then we'll just close down the mod desk. Perfect. Okay, so now that I've made my changes in that particular area, what I need to do next is look at the fill planes and particle systems um, and our tip on ground stuff. So that's what we're going to get into next. Going to go into the actual tip on ground folder in the map that I'm taking everything from. And again, we'll do our search for hops. And we have a few parts in here, so I'm just going to literally highlight those make a copy of them, come over to the tip on ground folder on the map that I'm bringing it into and then just paste it in there like so. Done. And then we'll come into our next part which is our P systems for our fill planes and particle systems. I'm going to work with the fill planes first so we'll open this one up. So again we need to have a look at everything to do with hops and then bring that into the other map. Because I'm using the same script and it's from a 17 map and bringing it into a 17 map everything's structured very similar so I don't need to convert any files or anything else really straightforward to just bring stuff over so again I'm going to do a search for hops and we have our HUD fill hops DDS so we're going to copy that over like so <clears throat> nothing else in there I need I've already got my shader so I don't need to worry about that again we can do a search for our hops and we can bring all of these parts over as well. Don't need that one, just those three. I've already copied the uh, HUD. So we'll copy those three, bring them over, paste them in like so. Excellent. So the next thing we need to do here is obviously create our new fill type for our hops. Now you've got two different choices here. Because the actual fill planes has already been set up in this particular I3D, you could always export that one and then bring it into this one over here, but you know, that's that's one way of doing it. The way that I'm going to do this is just open up <clears throat> this particular one here. I'll take um, cotton, that's fine. And I'm just going to export that. So I'm just going to go export selection. Make sure I'm in the right folder here. So we go Farm Sim 7, uh, Farm Sim 17, Manchester, Maps, P Systems, Fill Planes. Then here I'm just going to put in, oops, not that. I'm going to put in hops, like so, and we'll save. And if we minimise that, we made, we need to make a few changes to that particular I3D. So we'll open this up in Notepad++. And obviously we don't want cotton, we want hops so just to make sure we're actually spelling it correctly and everything else <clears throat> we're going to have a look at the actual parts that we brought over so we've got hops underscore diffuse pretty straightforward so again we can just type in our hops we'll take a copy of that text like so and just overwrite the cotton sections here and cotton there like so and then if you want to you can also make these ones 
change these ones so it refers to hops on all the lines. I like to do this just so it separates everything. So we've got all our hops in there, that's perfectly fine. And we'll go ahead and save. We'll close that down and then we'll open it up in Giant Serta just to make sure that it does actually open and it gives us no errors and all the rest of it. We have no errors and there it is. You can always have a look at our user attributes here. Just make sure our field type is set up correctly at hops, which it is. Check our material editing window, make sure it's pointing to the right diffuse channel, which it is. All good. So next thing I need to do then is bring that in. So I'm going to go file and then import click on the hops and then just right click move up and that's now in the line in the right place in the cinegraph here we've now got our fill plane of hops into the material holder brilliant so let's save close that down that's all we need to do for that one then we can just delete our old i3d and i3d shapes because we no longer need those because they're now integrated into the fill plane material holder so that's that one done so Next we'll move on to our particle systems. If we open up the particle systems folder here, we've got a few bits and pieces we need to bring over. <clears throat> so we'll go back into the other map here, particle systems. So we have some fill planes. Again, we're going to do our search for hops and we'll copy those two over into the fill planes folder there like so. And we'll also copy over our foliage layer. So we'll copy that one and bring that into the foliage folder. If you want to have a look at that, just open it up in paint.net or appropriate program that can view DDS files. And that's what our foliage looks like and the rest of it, so that's fine. Just to make sure it's a foliage channel and not a fill type or whatever else. Uh, that's fine, so we'll do that one. And then we need to, we've already got our shaders, so we don't need to worry about any of that. So the next thing we need to do is obviously then work with our cut of effect maps. So again, what we could do here is open this one up on this map and then make a copy of the <clears throat> part in the cinegraph there, make an I3D and whatever else. But for me, again, I'm just going to open up the one that I'm on the map I'm working with here. And I'll use cotton again, that's fine. So I'll just do export selection again. And I'll make sure I'm in the right folder for the particle systems. And again, I'm just going to call this hops. And we'll save. And we'll open this up in Notepad++ and then make our adjustments accordingly. So again, in this place, in this case, we haven't got cotton. We've got hops underscore diffuse. Again, if we want to here, we can take our hops text and overwrite all the bits and pieces in here so that it matches in everything to do with hops. We need to change our fruit type anyway, so we might as well do it while we're here. So we'll change all of that to hops. Now this may ma must match your field type here, must match, or fruit type in this case, must match what you've set up in your moddesk.xml. So make sure the spelling is the same and all the rest of it. If you've got hop in your mod desk and hops in here, obviously it won't match and it won't know what it's looking for and it won't display the correct parts. So make sure they do match spelling, uppercase, lowercase, all the rest of it. Okay, so we've made our changes there, so we'll go ahead and save. We can open this up in Giant Serta just to make sure there are no errors before we integrate it into our cutter effect map material holder. So that's looking good. Again, if we want to here, we can have a look at our user attributes just to make sure that everything is set up correctly. Have a look at our material editor window. Everything there looks pretty good. So we've got hops across all of those. Perfectly fine. We can close that down and then go back into our cutter effect map material holder here and we'll import. So we go file import, double click on the hops need to highlight it in this case and then go control X click on the shader transform group control V to bring it into there done click save 
Oh, that's it. We've now done our cutter effect matte material holder, so we don't need to do anything in that one any further. So we can now remove our old I3D and I3D shapes. Perfect. Okay, so moving on to the next one here, we need to actually have a look at our material holder and our particle map material holder. Now, we know that we've copied over all the hop stuff from this particular map, so I don't really need this one anymore because whatever I'm going to be working with, I've already got, so I can close that down the way I'm going to do it anyway. Now, obviously, if you find that there's parts that you haven't got that you'll need to copy over, like the smoke 6x6 underscore 01 and things like that, most of these are shared by the other in-game standard fruit types, so you generally won't have to mess about too much, but you may find that there'll be something missing and you might need to bring it over, just identify what it is, and then copy it into the appropriate folder and whatever else. So I'm going to open up the effect map material holder here. And we're going to go into unloading first of all, and I need to obviously make a new one for hops. If I was to just make a copy of this, irregardless to what I renamed it to and pointed the actual bits and pieces over here to, it would always use cotton. That's just the way the system works. The only way you can actually get it to properly use a different material type or the actual diffuse texture or whatever else is to export it out, make your changes and then re-import it again. So it's a little bit time consuming but necessary. So again, with this one highlighted, all I'm going to do here is just go export selection in the right folder. And again, I'm going to call this hops and we'll click save. Now, what I'll do in this particular case is I'm going to do export all of them and then we'll bring them back in all in together so that there's tries to cut down on how many times I have to do this. But so I've got smoke. Now smoke is a little bit different. I don't need to export this one because <clears throat> it's going to use the same material or diffuse channel for every single one of them. So with your material editing window open up here, you can have a look at cotton and see that that's smoke oak. There's no diffuse channel or anything else. We have got a custom shader ID, so you can just double check that if you want to. But everything's pretty much going to be exactly the same on cotton as it is for triticale, millet, and every other one because they all say smoke oat or at least most of them do i think there are a couple which might say something different that one says smoke rape but the actual parameters are exactly the same for every single one of them so in this particular case what i can do here is actually just take the cotton and go Control d to make a copy of it and then just change the actual text accordingly so i'll come into here and i'll change this to hops Oops. Again, making sure you spell everything correctly. And I'll bring up my user attributes window here and I'll change this to hops for the fruit type or field type that we're going to be working with. Tab across, lock that in. That's done. That one's now done. Excellent. So we've got to bring in our unloading, but we're going to do that in a minute. So I'll leave that one open. Straw we don't need to worry about because this particular fruit type doesn't require straw doesn't have any straw so we can move on we want to set up our chopper effect again if we look at this one we can find that this the cotton if we come over it uses the straw diffuse if we have a look at the triticale that uses straw diffuse as well the spelt straw diffuse so we can see all of these use the same one again similar to the smoke so what we can do here to cut down on time is literally just make a copy of that one again and we'll just type in our hops up here I'll make a copy of that just so I don't have to keep typing it every time and we'll come down to this one make a change in here like so tab across to lock it in and we'll change our fill type over to hops as well tab across to lock that in there perfect so we've now done our smoke and our chopper spreader is not required because that's for our compost and caulk if it's set up on the map you're working with so we need to do our pipe now this is going to be slightly different because obviously each one of them will use a different particle system so or diffuse channel so we can use our cotton in this case and again go file export selection so in this case i'm going to call this hops one and we'll save and it's important obviously you remember which one is which 
um, otherwise it will get very confusing. So you might want to make a note somewhere um, in Notepad or whatever else. So we had, whoops, hops uh, equals unloading and then hops one equals pipe and so on and so on. I'll put this over on my other screen just so you can export them all in one go and then make your changes in Notepad++ and bring them all back in in one big hit otherwise it will just take forever to have to keep going in and coming out going in coming out whatever else again whichever works for you is um, you know your choice you do what works best for you okay so we've exported that one so I'm going to leave that one open as well and we'll continue on down so we need to do our belt again this is going to be different so we'll choose cotton again and we'll go file export selection and we'll call this hops 2 and save so I'll make my change in my text document up, up here so I'll go hops 2 equals belt like so and then we can move down to our leveler so again we'll choose cotton file export selection and we'll call this hops 3 and save and I'll make my notes so hops 3 equals leveler like so and I'll just show you that so if I bring that down so we've got our hops is unloading hops 1 pipe hops 2 belt hops 3 leveler and that's that so what we can do now is actually make our changes because there's no further parts in there that we need to adjust so we can minimize that one down and we'll then come in and make our adjustments so we'll start with the hops remembering hops is unloading so we're going to open this in notepad plus plus and we have our cotton diffuse so this is going to be a fill type so we need to just double check what that's called so it is just hops underscore diffuse so we can type in our hops and we can make our changes to all the other parts as we see fit so we'll just do like this and we'll make our changes here as well just so it's all matches in with the actual fruit type that we're going to be working with here like so so we've made all our changes there perfect and we can go ahead and save we'll close that one down <clears throat> so next one we need to work with is our hops one which was for our belt so we'll open this one up and again this is going to use the fill planes so we need to change this to hops and this one And all of those like so and save and we'll close that down hops 2 is for our belt so again that's going to be a fill plane so we can do this one and save close that and then we've got our last one hops 3 which is for our leveler so we'll open this one up and again make our change there with the hops like so and we'll then close that down perfect now that we've made all of our changes to the i3ds <clears throat> In Notepad++, joined everything together, we can come back into our Effect Map Material Holder here and just import them all in. So we're going to go File Import and we're going to start with Hops, which is for our unloading. So we're going to highlight that, Control X, come up to our unloading section, paste it in. That one's done. And then we'll go File Import and we've got 
hops one which was for our pipe so we'll bring that one in highlight it control x come up to our pipe control v paste it in and then we've got hops two belt so we'll go file import hops two highlight it control x come up to our belt paste it in <clears throat> and then we've got last but not least is our leveler so hops three so we'll go file import hops three highlight it control x leveler control v paste it in okay so we've now done all of the parts for our effect map material holder now you can go back through just double check all of the materials they're all pointing in the right place and everything else i've got no errors in here so i'm pretty confident that's going to be okay so we've got all our bits and pieces now adjusted in this particular material holder i'm going to go ahead and save and exit out of that one perfect so now what we can do is actually come through our old i3ds and i3d shapes because we no longer require any of those because they're all to do with our effect map material holder so we can remove all of those perfect so the next one we need to look at is our particle map material holder now it may be worth just bringing up the old the one from the other map and just double check what is actually in there to see what changes might need to be made because sometimes there are changes and sometimes there are not there may be additions in there and in other cases there may be not so just bring up the particle map material holder from the map that you're taking everything from and just have a quick look and see what you get so if we bring this one up we're going to go look at our smoke particle system and you can see we do have one there for hops we've also got chopper particle systems and we also have one there for hops now it may again be worth just double checking if we actually bring these up we can have a look at our material identity window and we can see that this one actually is fx smoke six for six underscore zero one diffuse if we have a look at our roy this is exactly the same so we're going to just double check that against the other map and see what we've got again with our chopper particles so we look at our hops and we can see that this is actually fx weak wind row four by one underscore diffuse so if we have a look at our roy that's exactly the same and if we have a look at our carrot exactly the same so if we then have a look at our particle map material holder on the other map and just compare them and see what it's got in that one so if we go into our smoke we've got cotton if we have a look in that one and that one is also using fx sorry that's smoke yeah so that one's actually using the same as the other one if we go back to our smoke up the top here we can have a look so that's using <clears throat> smoke fx six plus six and this one is using smoke fx six plus six so we don't need to really export anything there again like we did before we can just highlight one that's already existing making sure we're in the right material holder here make a copy of it and then change our text accordingly so we're going to change that one to hops and then we'll change our fill type to hops as well and we're done with that one again with our chopper particles we can come into this one make a copy with Control d and then make our changes in our text again so there's no exporting and importing requiring this particular setup just making a couple of duplications within the actual cinegraph here and then adjust enough text and field types and attributes and whatever else to make it work okay so we don't need spread of particles or anything else so i can go ahead and save that one we'll close that down don't need that one anymore so we're done with that particular map i believe actually one more thing i will just have a look at i want to just double check if we come back to our fruit huds because i want to just double check now i believe maps scripts fruit huds so we're going to do a search for our hops again and we've got our two fruit huds there so we'll copy those come back over paste them into our fruit huds folder on this particular map perfect so we've now got all of our parts set up on this particular map we've now brought over the hops into this particular map the manchester map here and it's painted down in giant so it's perfectly fine 
um, and whatever else we've set up on mod desk now this particular map has already got the additional map type script set up on it so there's some parts there obviously which are skipped on how to get that set up but i have got a separate video on how to bring all that over into the into a map and get the basics of that set up so this was kind of like a, an addition to that map, that particular video if you like just how to add in a, another additional fruit type on top of all the others that may be already existing so i think we're pretty much done there i'm confident we can move forward with this so what i'll do is i'll get into game and then we'll actually check that one it does actually allow us to cut it with the maze header because i want to use the maze header and not the grain header i think that might be a little bit more realistic as far as the limitations of the game go and what we've got available uh, i don't think the grain header would suit um so hopefully it will allow me to actually harvest it with that i'm curious to see how it sets it up with the sewing machine which one of those it actually uses i believe um depending on what grain header you set it up as will then determine what seed seeder it uses or sewing machine but we'll just double check that and see what that uses as how that sets that up and all the rest of the bits and pieces and whatever else um what you can also do is go into your map01.xml find any farm silos that you want to add hops to or whatever additional fruit type you're bringing in so we need to make a couple of adjustments in here because i want to be able to store it in all of my silos so i'm going to bring in a couple of lines here and just change these over to hops so that i can store them in my silos so again we'll come in here and we'll change our fill type to hops like so now i can store hops in all of my silos and if i actually then come down to a cell point we'll use the town bakery that's fine i'll just do the one in this case so i'm going to make a copy of that line and then paste that in and then i'll just type into there hops so i can sell hops other co-op i'll adjust the rest of them later on if i keep this but whatever else so okay we're pretty good there so i'm going to go save We'll close that down. Don't need to make any further changes there. I can now store them and I can sell them at, at least one of the sell points on the map. Fantastic. So we'll get this into game, I can say, and uh, we'll test it all out and hopefully we'll be, we'll be good and we'll be done there. So I'll see you once we get into game. Right, so we're now in game and we have our hops all grown up in the field here. And boy are they tall look at that okay looking good uh, i've just painted these down in giant so to save me having to actually grow them in game so forgive the actual ground texture there were sugar beets on this particular field i believe or it may have been potatoes i forget might have been potatoes actually looking at that particular ground texture but anyway um yeah so i just literally painted them down in ge so i didn't have to wait for them to grow and whatever else even though it could speed up time but this was just quicker so um, I've just bought a harvester and um, as I said I'm going to try and do this with the actual grain header and we'll see what happens. If I go into the store you can see that it does actually show up on the harvester here and if we then go into the headers it won't show up on your normal headers but it show or your grain headers but it shows up on your corn cutter maize headers. Now I thought that perhaps maybe it was actually, it may have just been real luck that when I set this up on a different fruit type that I wanted to use the corn or maize head, um, it automatically selected this type of cedar. But in this particular case, because I've listed it as sewing machine, it's gone to this type of cedar. That's fine, I'm going to go with that, but I think I will probably find out, and I'm not sure off the top of my head, which adjustment to make for it. I think it might be planter, but I think that might be for potatoes i'm not sure i'll have to look up uh, look that up but i really would prefer it to be on this one so it matches along with your um corn because that's the type of head that we're going to be using so i'll change it to this one but i can't remember what the actual name or parameter you need to change to get this one to to show up so i'll have to look into that so um but uh, anyway for now this is fine we're just going to go with this one it does list it i'm not going to see the field with it or anything like that um, it shows up in there so I'm confident it will probably work however you set it up with whatever cedar so there's that and if we go into our escape menu here we look at our fruit types so if we come across 
to fruit types two we now have our hops and you can see that that's on the field there perfect we come across and it shows us our growing stage and all the rest of it perfect we can also have a look at our prices so if you look in our prices we have our hops here at the co-op and that's their sell price obviously that can be adjusted with multipliers and price per litre and all the rest of it but we have that there so we can double check to make sure it's showing up in our silos and all the rest of it now I have three different silos on this particular map they're all set up with their own save IDs but each one does actually show up in the escape menu it's just you never know which one's got what in it and that's again a limitation of how the farm silos tend to work now in 17 you can get them to display all of the field types in here you just don't know which silo it is that it's actually got it in <laughs> till you go to it which is a bit of a but anyway we'll just move on so we'll get this fired up and we'll open this up and hopefully we'll be able to harvest some hops so let's just check this out so let's get lined up here and we'll turn this on and I want to just see what the cutter effect is going to look like uh, it's not too bad I guess it does look a bit near but it's okay it's not too bad we have our chopper particles all coming out the back and everything I think I would have preferred to have seen something a little bit better than that might have to adjust that but it's working so it does show up on the actual header um, and we have our particles coming out of the pipe there and all the rest of it and again like I said we have our cutter effect so we'll just hire a worker here and just send him on his way <clears throat> we have our cut short texture and all the rest of it so that's working fine <clears throat> so that is working that is working perfectly fine there's nothing wrong there at all so <clears throat> what I'll do is I'll pause and I'll get some into the actual um, harvester here and then we'll empty the harvester out just double check that we can put it into a silo and we'll also check that it can be sold and then we'll be ending the video there so I'll see you when I get a full harvester so our harvester is practically full now and the pipes on the right side so we're going to go with that and uh, whatever else I just took a screenshot so we'll bring that back up we'll get this fired up and now what we're going to be looking for is our pipe particle systems and make sure that they work okay so we need to check those yeah that's perfectly fine field plane is okay so that's good everything there seems to be working okay so I think that's pretty good we've got it all into the map and everything else while that's unloaded I'm just going to bring up my console command here and we'll have a look through this I'll jump out of the tractor so it doesn't zoom about too much and we'll just have a look through here just make sure no errors and warnings that <clears throat> I don't already know about the one at the bottom there is to do with the console extension we can ignore that so we'll come up, no more there, no more errors there. These are for um, field types that I haven't added into the map yet. That's nothing to worry about. You can remove those by either adding in the actual fruit type or field type or deleting the appropriate section in the map material holders. But I tend to just ignore them. There's nothing going to hurt anything there. So we've got nothing there to worry about. There's a couple of errors there because I haven't set up the sounds for the conveyor belts correctly on the fabric script stuff but that's again not got nothing to do with what we've done here today in this video so that's fine there's no more errors there I've got loads of different things installed in here different field types and whatever else for greenhouses and whatever but no more errors there that's because I've got my map unzipped that particular warning so nothing to worry about there and no more errors anywhere there so the only errors and warnings we've got I already know about and they're nothing really too bothered uh, to to uh, too bothersome and nothing to do with the actual adding in of the hops so all good there okay so what I'll do here is I'm just going to go over to the actual farm silo this one over here will be fine because I've added the fill type into all of them they should work well that's what we're going to test anyway so we'll just come into this particular farm silo here I just want to double check that they do actually tip into the silo and it all shows up where it's meant to show up we do have our HUDs show up in the bottom here so that's good 
just testing everything making sure we get all what we are meant to get HUDs and field types and particle systems and whatever else so we'll just come over to here and we'll just do a quick test see what our empty unload that's perfectly fine I don't want to empty all of it out and we'll just come round so it's gone into there perfectly fine excellent so we'll come round to our fill spout here again <clears throat> and what I'll do before I just fill this up I'm just going to go into the escape menu here come across to our prices storage page and if we find our hops we can see that that's now showing up within our farm silo excellent so we can then <clears throat> reload because I've already got some in here it's just going to automatically give me what I've already got so that's fine part particle systems on that pipe are working okay excellent so we'll make our way out of here and we'll go over to the actual sell point of the co-op which is literally just across the road and we'll sell these off and just see one they do sell and then what we do actually get for them according to the prices and whatever else I'm going to have a play around with the actual cutter effect off 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 camera so to speak off screen um, I think I might adjust it slightly if it's possible so it looks and reacts a little bit more like when you cut the corn um, instead of just being a lead down sort of texture but it does work you know at the end of the day it does work so uh, go with it or whatever okay so I'm just going to unload this now we'll just empty the lot in money's going up like crazy so that's good and off of that just that little bit there it wasn't even a full trailer 15,000 according to the prices and whatever else so I think that's pretty good we've got all of our hops into the game for me I've set it up on the actual maze header because I think that's more appropriate for this type of crop again limitations of the game and what we've got in the game and all the rest of it I don't even know if you would harvest hops with a grain header or maize header no idea um, but that for me I believe is a better option than the grain header so that's fine I do need to look to see what the uh, cedar is set up and how we need to go about that because I would prefer to have it on this type of cedar and not this one but again that's just my preference but again like I say it all does work you can seed it you can harvest it and whatever else you can you've got the field types particle systems and all the rest of it um, can store it if you set your map 01 to XML up properly and you can sell it so yeah brilliant it's in the map and working uh, that's a good start then small adjustments come later so I'm pretty happy with that hopefully this video has been of some help to anybody who's been struggling to get hops into the map I know a couple of people have asked me to look into this and it is quite involved so and I've had other things to do video wise and whatever so didn't want to just do it willy-nilly wanted to try and put something together with a kind of structured nature so that it was easy to follow and hopefully I've been able to do that so I'm going to say thank you very much for watching and I will catch you on the next one